I, as I said, after meeting you for 20 minutes, and I could see that you were so meticulous, even when you asked me questions. You'd done your research, you, but you were only talking to me for 20 minutes. So having that drive and that, I don't want to call it perfectionist, but having that drive and that focus... Where did that come from? Does that come from your family background? Does that come from how you were brought up? Does it come from schooling? All the above. So let's talk about family background. Parents, Nigerian, um, came, came over 64, 66, something like that, and had me um, as the first born of my two sisters. <clears throat> and we're Nigerians. And whatever you've read, whatever you've seen, whatever you watched, it's true. <laughs> it's <story. clears throat> And some. And what they instilled in us was discipline. We had a disciplined upbringing, you uh-huh. know, Here's a very quick example. If you went to the cinema to see a film, Dad would expect it when he came home to you had written it up, what you saw. What was the film about? So he could then say, ah, it's a good film. I might go and watch it, I might not. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you had yeah. to write up the film. Yeah. And how did we do that? He taught us how to write cursively by from 3, 4, 5. He taught us how to type 6, 7, 8. Um, so all that was there. We knew how to eat, bathe, cook, probably before I was 5, 6 or 7. Um, and in that time, dare I say, we were home alone a lot, you know, yeah, because yeah, they were yeah. out three, four jobs a day and left us to our own devices, knowing full well our own devices were, remember back in the day, you had only two channels, BBC and ITV. <laughs> <I know>, ITV. <laughs> so it was books, it was reading, yeah, it was truly. books, it was playing, it was understanding what we was about. And in my, uh, me personally, particularly, and it might come to this a bit later, between about 10 and 16, I kind of lived on my own. My parents decided to go back to Nigeria, um, and I said, well, not for me, really. And I came back to London, I went to school. I lived in my family house, which my mother still lives in now. We bought that in 1972, she's still there now. But when I was growing up, I lived in that home. My, my own, I had my own bedroom, front room, shared kitchen, shared bathroom, with other people who lived in the house who looked over me. So people were like, whoa, that couldn't be hot. But those home owners all over the shop. I was a big boy, physically, and I was well brought up. And mm. so that discipline, that looking after yourself, looking apart, and that's important, as you can see, looking apart is key to Nigerians, mainly. Mm. And it's not, well, for some it is showing off, but for us it's about, my dad used to say, they say never judge a book by its cover. Don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll always judge it by the cover. It's true. They do. First it's true. instance, they yeah, all do. It's so true. look the part, and once they get beneath that, be the part. That's, that's what he really said. Good. I like look that. the part, and once they get beneath that, be the part so that's where the discipline comes from that that fear as well there's a lot of mm. fear in our household growing up from my mom from my dad but that also made us think about what is what what we wanted in life my dad education education long before cameron was saying that he was saying that you guys are gonna do well at school you're gonna go to university you're gonna go on because we didn't do it and it's all about legacy yes um he died unfortunately in 2003 but what he always said to us growing up was it's legacy We've had our fun. Now it's your turn. And when you're close to dying, it's whoever you bring after you. It's legacy. And you have to pass on that baton. 